people know lead is bad, right? And people know it's bad for children. They know it's bad for themselves. Um, but they just don't know that it's still a problem. What are some of the biggest obstacles you see in your advocacy work to get the laws, the policies in place to stop the exposure of these toxic chemicals? The first barrier I would say is just like a lack of um, public awareness around a lot of these issues, right? Not necessarily even a lack of education. People know lead is bad, right? And people know it's bad for children. They know it's bad for themselves, but they just don't know that it's still a problem, right? That's something that comes across all the time is I thought that was a thing back in the 70s or the 80s, right? Or even right. the 90s, but like, wasn't that all taken care of? The other second um, big barrier, I would say, is we often have like industry and business interests on the other side, right? Lead was first reported as like lead poisoning event in a child in 1904 in Australia. But unfortunately, there was a whole lead industry, right, going on that was able to convince a lot of countries to say, lead is good. And lots of countries took up lead paint, they took up lead pipes, they took up you know, put a lot of lead in everything. And here we are dealing with it decades and decades later and all these hidden costs to both people and our infrastructure, our environments, right? There's always businesses on the other side that's saying, this is good for business right now. But it's also the lead example is so poignant, right? Because like, it's also a warning for all these other chemicals that like, we have to ban them. And even if we ban them today, like it's still gonna be decades of work to get them out of our bodies and our environment.